behind the scenes. And welcome to Computer Science E259. My name is David Malin. This is Lecture 12, Ajax. And we are joined tonight by Mr. David Lieberman, standing at my right here, who is a senior software developer at Harvard Business School. Ajax is an up-and-coming technology, as we've sort of teased you with in previous weeks. And I will leave it to Mr. Lieberman to introduce you to it in detail tonight. So if we could welcome him. David. Thank you, David. Trying to be undone by the technology here. Uh, so David stole a little bit of my thunder in the unrecorded preview remarks, so I'm going to get him back by giving the lie to one or two of the things he's just said. Um, starting with my title, I'm that vain. We had a reorg in, in our group, and I'm now the application software architect in the technologies group. Um, I won't push that any further. So Ajax, why bother? Um, let me start by taking a step back. How many folks have experience building Java-driven web applications? Okay, a handful. So I say J2EE, and at least a few people understand what I'm talking about, the Java Enterprise APIs, which include web application um, APIs, persistence APIs, all of that good stuff. For six or seven years at least, um, the principal drawback to building web applications, somebody who's got some experience in there. Um, what would you say if, if you were trying to put something useful in front of an end user that had a lot of data to transfer back and forth, change of state, what's the challenge? It's slow because everything is driven by a page submit. Every change that you make to the data as an end user, you click a button, you wait for a page to redraw. The entire page has to redraw, even if only one small piece of information has changed. And if you're talking about a page where you've got, you've scrolled three or four screens deep, you get to scroll back to where you were to figure out where you left off. It's not a great application sort of environment. It's not an environment that's intuitive to the user to have everything be driven by these constant refreshes of the entire screen to get from state A to state B. Do you get a performance gain by using Ajax? It's a wash in a lot of respects. It depends on your perspective. So you're still going to have pay the cost of sending information up to a server, waiting for information to come back down from a server. There's some cost associated with re-rendering some piece of information. From the perspective of the code, is probably not a heck of a lot of performance gain. From the perspective of the user, they might perceive a performance gain. Are you going to be able to write simpler code? What do you think? Not a chance. It's actually much more difficult to write an AJAX-driven application than it is to drive a standard page submit application, because your pages can be essentially static, static information. You just draw your HTML. You're going to substitute some values for some variables. But for the most part, it's just text that you keep re-rendering to the screen. An AJAX-driven application requires you to have code on the server side that is just as complex as it was before, plus code on the client side that is tons more complex than it was before. But in the end, you, get a, you can, if you do it well, and I hope we're doing it well, present your user with a better, more in, in, uh, intuitive UI, and you're going to be meeting riser user expectations. At HBS, our MBAs come in after they've been out in the workforce for a couple of years, typically. They've been using some of the very sophisticated web-based applications that people like Google, Yahoo are building. They come to our environment, and they see that we're building tons and tons of applications that are driven by page submit interfaces, and we begin to feel the heat. Okay, this is where David stole a little bit of my thunder. AJAX stands for asynchronous JavaScript and XML, except that it doesn't. The buzz now when you go to any conference where people are spending a lot of time doing AJAX is that AJAX is no longer an acronym. AJAX is just AJAX. And I think we'll get to part of the reason for that as I move on through the presentation here. So what are my goals for AJAX? 
take the protocol out of the equation. What do I mean by that? So I remind myself what I mean by that. I want the data exchange to be in the foreground of the process. I don't want to have to spend a heck of a lot of time worrying about the APIs I'm using to move information up and down between the client and the server. Web application developers, if I say struts, how many of you want to run screaming from the room? Not nearly enough of you. I do. Even before struts, going back one, la one layer to the old request.get parameter, nightmare. Every single piece of information that went back and forth from the what went back from the client to the server was in a name value pair. The way to get at it was to call request.get parameter name and get the value out of it. And if you were sending a lot of information back and forth between the client and the server, that was a major nuisance. I don't want to do that anymore, ever. The other piece that really interests me about this, and Struts doesn't really solve this problem either from my perspective. If I'm sending large amounts of fairly complex interrelated information back and forth, I've got to come up with some piece naming conventions. So I've got a handful of objects whose state I'm changing. They're all objects of the same type, same properties, different values. I've got to come up with some sort of naming convention that allows me to map this value to this object, this value to that object, and that's a major nuisance under request.get parameter. And the struts API, which is a somewhat more sophisticated way of moving that information around, doesn't really solve that problem for you very effectively. So my goal always is to have the same data types moving back and forth. Request.get parameter only works in one direction. In the other direction, I've got data that's sitting in request scope, in session scope, in application scope. These are the three sorts of environments that you get to deal with in a web application. Request, request scoped information. Goes up, comes down, it's gone. Session scoped information. It belongs to the user for the life of his, of his experience with your application. Once he's done, it's gone. Application scoped information is essentially the cache, the application scoped cache. These slides are from a year ago. A year ago, there weren't really a whole lot of frameworks that were available for running AJAX. That world has changed a little bit, and I'll get to that. Struts does not do it for you, for all the reasons I've just outlined. The XML HTTP request is the fundamental, fundamental technology that makes AJAX work. And what it is, when you get right down to it, it's a browser within the browser. You've got a browser page open. Your JavaScript environment has access to this XML HTTP request object or many XML HTTP request objects, each one of which is responsible for handling a request response piece of traffic. Client generates a request, waits for a response. The response comes back to the browser. The JavaScript, listening for this HTTP request, picks it up and does whatever you tell it to do with it. So. The specific property is the response text is a string that comes back from the server, a random string, any piece of information. If the server re returns a well-formed XML response, the response XML property will also be populated with the same value. Ready state, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll explain how that works, but that's essentially a polling mechanism on the client side to say the XML HTTP request is now waiting for a response or has received a response. And the status is essentially the same, it is exactly the same value you would get from the HTTP response code, the error 500, the 200 for a satisfied request, 404 for a not found. Right, so the XML HTTP request is a JavaScript property in the browser. I'm sorry, say again? What are the browser dependencies? All of the major browsers now implement the XML HTTP request. The history of it is that Explorer introduced it first, well ahead of anybody else. And the folks at Microsoft didn't actually know what they had accomplished. Or if they did, they didn't leverage it. It wasn't really until Google came along and said, this is pretty cool, that, the, that some applications began being built against it, and then the other browsers picked up. They don't all implement it in the same way, surprise. And we'll get to some of the workarounds for that, too. Um, but they all support it now. 
So the methods of the XML HTTP requests, um, not particularly exciting. The open method um, makes a connection to some URL that you supply on the server. Typically, asynchronous is always going to be true. I've actually tried to play setting that to false, and I haven't been able to get it to work. So that's sort of a meaningless argument from my perspective. And the send is actually when you send the string that you've constructed on the client side off to the server. On ready state change. So while, this, while the XML HTTP request is alive, the browser will continually ask it, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? And at some point, it'll come back and say, hey, I got something. All right, so this is a quick walk through what one of these things looks like. Callback, extremely important, which is the JavaScript method that you wrote in your client-side code that is going to cache the request, or you're going to hand off the result of the request to that method, and your processing will continue. Ajax request and Ajax response, exactly what you think they are. Information going up, information coming back. So you pass the callback in to the method. Right. And at some point in here, you're going to actually say, right, you're binding the request to the callback method. I'm trying to th see exactly where we have that set up here. Maybe I don't have it in the code yet. <laughs> Okay, so this is where we're actually instantiating the XML HTTP request. And here's this instance of the browsers don't implement it in the same way. So under Explorer, you need to use the ActiveX object. All the other browsers will support this method to create the same request object with the same properties and methods. All right, I'm going to move on to some examples of some stuff that I've done at HBS and some of my uh, colleagues have worked on as well. Our application access administrative environment, the tutorials platform authoring environment, video tools portal admin environment, and there's some more in the video tools that have, have created since I wrote the slide that I'll show you as well. At the time that we were beginning to work on Ajax, we made sure that it went out to very small user communities. Why? It was risky. It was relying on the probability that all the end users were going to have JavaScript enabled in the browsers. Um, since this time, we've gotten a little bit braver and we've, had, we've, we've pushed it out to some broader end user communities and so far I haven't gotten any pushback. There's always a first. All right, so let's start with the application access administrative environment. This is essentially just our model for seeing who can get access to what applications, what levels of access they get. It's standard across our entire environment. All of our applications use this code base. There's a single administrative application that controls how it works. And this was my first foray into writing a little bit of Ajax into one of our apps. And I'll bring it up. So here it is. This is not an exciting implementation of Ajax. The only piece of Ajax that actually works here is this selection box. Each application has its own collection of access roles. So once I've selected an application, I can then drip, drop through the access roles to pick one up. So for giggles and grins, there. So we've loaded one application that has one access role. Lots of reasons why this isn't exciting. Anybody want to make a guess? Apart from the fact that it's just a really boring application. There's nothing that I did there that I couldn't have done without Ajax. I could have downloaded all of this data as one great big JavaScript file, had it up front, and never had to worry about going back to the server again to reload that, that selection box. And while I'm on the subject, of the UI. This is a Firebug plugin for Firefox. Anybody familiar with this? This rocks. You cannot build an Ajax application without this tool. I'm absolutely convinced of this. 
And what it gives you is the ability to track all the traffic going back and forth between the client and the browser and actually see the data. So I can get the UI to cooperate with me. There we go. So I'll just pick another application here that I know has some roles. Not all of them do. So what we're looking at here is actually what the response came back. I want to see if I can show you the request first. Excuse me while I... Oh, actually, no, you well, don't see the response because that's where it is. Request I get parameter. I violated my own rule when I built this, but again, it was the first implementation. So there's no re request object to look at here. The information that the server picks up is just the roles I want, the application that I want them associated with. And what comes back to me is what you saw in that response object right there, just an XML document. It's purely the data. There's no rendering involved here at all, which is actually something else that we discovered. So this gets into the selection box by using JavaScript to manipulate the HTML DOM. And if all you're doing is populating a selection box with a bunch of name value pairs that look a heck of a lot like your XML in the first place, that's trivial. Once you start trying to build much more complex um, UIs and HTML, you don't want to try to do that with JavaScript, the JavaScript API for rendering a page. It'll work, and you will never, ever, ever be able to bug fix. It's a nightmare to figure out once you did after you, what you did after you've done it. So we'll get to some of the solutions that we worked out for that problem as well. Ah, I got it right. So the tutorials platform, that's the application that I just brought up in the application access admin environment. The tutorial platform that, that we've built in the education technology group at HBS is essentially two applications. One is the authoring environment, which is an entirely um, JSP-driven HTML um, application environment. Then there's the end user delivery environment, which uses Flash. And it's also got a server-side component. So Flash communicates back with the server to track user progress. So you go away for a couple of days, you come back to the tutorial, it picks up where you left off. And it also communicates with the server for graded exams. Flash is a heck of a lot like Ajax. That's why I say this is the Ajax competitor alert. My basic rule of thumb right now is that if you're in the web application world and you're writing web apps and you're not writing either Flash or Ajax, you're probably wrong. But it's a bit of a wash right now as to which one of these is actually going to win. I think it is a bit more of a competition than, than we're typically willing to acknowledge. One of these is going to end up being the dominant, dominant player in UI development. So let's have a look at this thing. So here's an example of the Flash-driven environment. You can see it's actually showing, some, showing my tracking information. This is all stored in our persistent uh, our database. And I could go ahead and hit through these, and that information will go up to the server and be stored, and that's persistent. It's a beautiful interface. Our guys do really good work. And each one of these also will have some graded exams. Let's see if I can find one that I haven't failed. And I'm not going to bother trying to get these correctly, but you get the point. These things are, th this is a Flash application, but it's got a client-side and a server-side component. The authoring environment, another one of the places where we first got started playing with some Ajax. And one of the initial implementations is this trivial bit right here, a little pop-up that gives us some information about the app. What we quickly learned as I was building this, we are not Google. My initial pass at this they were mouse overs. And so I could sit here and saw across these little icons like that and bring the server to its knees in a matter of seconds. So 
We changed that to make sure you really wanted the information by requiring you to click on it. So that's a fairly trivial implementation of that. This one's a little bit more interesting. Here we wanted to be able to reorder, resort, re-nest the information in any given module in, in, the, in a given tutorial. And the initial pass at this was really awful. And this was the age of um, page submit driven application development, right? If I wanted to reorder the children of interface, which actually only has one child, I would have had to click into here, get the UI for this, just this element, and that each one of the children at the top level would have had a one, a two, a three. I reorder it, I submit it, and that only works for the first generation children of memory. For a complicated structure like this, that was a nightmare. The solution is to expose it as an AJAX environment, and then with some clever JavaScript, just do a drag and drop that allows me to do any number of things. I can take it, prepend it as a sibling with a double click. I can take an object, append it as a child, and I've changed the structure there. Now I can do that for this entire little tree here. This is a fairly complex tree. And when I send this up to the server, that's a lot of information to reorder. So what the AJAX allows me to do, and let's actually do it, and we'll see what it stores, is to send this up as one complex piece of information. And we'll bring up Firebug, save the changes. Now you notice that you don't see a request response in that URL anymore because the information goes up in the request object. Where did you go? No. There we are, the post. Come on now. It's bound and determined to make a fool of me. Let's make another change here and see if we can force it. It's not going to show me the XML, which would be in this little box here, which essentially looks a lot like the XML that comes back. And here's another instance where there's no view information coming back. All you're seeing is the name value pairs for each of the objects as they go up. You can see that the objects are somewhat more complicated. Each one has a sequence, and the nested structure is actually represented in the XML exactly as it appears on the, in the UI. So this is an instance where I could send that XML back up to the server. I know exactly how to map each piece of information to each component because the structure is represented correctly for me in the data itself. Well, let's see if I can show you one other useful little AJAX widget we built into this environment. Ah, I guess I can't. Maybe I can bring it up in another one. I think this will work, but it's a little slow to load because it's a lot of data. The authoring environment is about writing the text. All the text in that flash environment is XML stored in our persistent data systems, delivered down to the client at request time. So I have an authoring environment to put the XML into the system. And let's see if it behaves this time. There we go. So here's what I was talking about, one of these great big long scrolls with a lot of data that we want to change. One small piece way down here. So that information went back up to the server, got stored. Now I know because there's this yellow ring around here that there is a change made that's waiting for a faculty member to come and approve and say, 
I'm allowed to use the number there. No, you better write out the word because that's standard English usage. And the faculty member can come and say, well, let's see how this one works. Let's take a risk. We can see the difference in the text that we made here. This is not Ajax, by the way, so it's a really cool little UI that one of my colleagues built. But the Ajax piece is, allows me to accept or reject the change. And it's back the way it was. I never had to reload the entire page. I didn't have to scroll back down to that arbitrary point somewhere way south of the top of the page to figure out where it was. That's actually a really functional, I would argue, indispensable a bit of technology that Ajax allows us to do that a page submit driven application would never even come close to supporting. Okay. So what were the gotchas? Support's a tough one. The uh, application access tool that I showed you earlier my original pass at that, the entire thing was written in Ajax. My boss came up to me, looked over my shoulder, and said, that's really cool, rip it all out. Because if you build it that way, you're the only one who's ever going to be able to support it, and you'll never be working on anything else. I was really ticked off, but he had a point. I already explained that. We just don't have the acres and acres of servers to support the huge kinds of hits that badly designed interfaces can generate if you're not careful. JavaScript DOM. I, ref I referenced this a little bit. When I talked about using the HTML APIs in JavaScript to write your page, the JavaScript DOM query is not, or uh, let me back up and try to be a little less inarticulate. The JavaScript DOM is not really intuitive, the APIs for it. So when you're sending XML, writing XML on the client side, sending XML back and parsing it again, it's pretty labor intensive on the code in the client-side code. And this gets, gets us a little bit further down the, uh, the path towards the answer to the question why it's no longer Ajax, but Ajax. Yeah, this one drove me up a wall. Explorer, Firefox, and I believe it's, this is true of Opera, all expose the ability to create an empty XML DOM in memory in the client-side. So I want to package up all my information as XML and send it off to the server rather than writing a bunch of request response um, parameters or request uh, name parameters, name value pairs. Safari did not let me create a new XML DOM. I went nuts trying to figure out a workaround for that. And ultimately I gave up and told all of my Macintosh users for this application to use Firefox. You can only get away with that so long. Okay, so the video tools implementation. What is video tools? This is our application for, it's essentially our video library. So we can search, at, search videos, um, we store some transcripts of some videos, and we're going to eventually bring our transcript library up to 100% at least for searchable quality transcripts, if not printable quality transcripts. And we also provide a, a, a venue, the, the video tools portal, for exposing some pieces of our collection in some customized um, end user driven um, APIs or UIs. And this was the first time that I threw out XML as my transfer language and went with JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Absolutely. What's the advantage to using JSON as opposed to using XML? The string comes back to the client. Right away, it's an object. I don't have to parse anything. I just have something that the JavaScript can say, hey, I know what that is. I can find you any piece of information you want to know about it. On the server side, there are APIs for every uh, programming language you can think of. They're incredibly easy to use. I'm certain I can say that the Java one is incredibly easy to use. In some ways, it's much easier to use than any of the XML parsing APIs. And it just was a much smoother transition to go back and forth between JSON on the client and JSON on the server than XML ever was. So let's have a look at the example for this. And I will bring up Firebug again. 
So this, has, this presented us with some similar challenges. So here's one of our portal implementations. This is the front page for the entire environment. And again, we wanted to be able to control the order in which the videos are, just, are presented to the user. So as an administrator, I can go in here and I can restore these assets. So now they're showing up in yellow. I have drag and drop ability. Oh, what did you do to me here? That is a failure I promise you I have never seen before. And what's more, I promise you my end user has never seen that before because he's never called me and told me that that's happening. Let me try one more time. There we go. Did that sort? Or did it just jump it where it was? There. Okay, so we've changed the order here. I'm going to cancel that because I don't know what I just changed. Maybe I can come up with one. And I'll remember what I did so I can put it back. doesn't appear to be respecting the, ex the, the existing order, does it? There we go. Or did we? That's it. So let's store that. And maybe this time we'll actually be able to see the traffic. Aha! Uh -huh. There's a bug in my code. The console actually belongs to um, Firebug. And I've got some uncommented out debugging in there. Why console is showing up not defined in the API that it was designed to work with, I don't know. But let's see if we can just at least get the storage to work. Can I clear this? Will it show me information I sent up? Yes. So, in the client, I constructed, instead of an XML document, JavaScript object notation. Can everybody see this? Is it a little too low? Move it a little bit north, will we be able to get a better view of it? So, one of the major disadvantages of JSON as compared to XML is that it's not very human readable. It's not particularly friendly. Each one of these brackets represents an object. They can be nested. And within them, there'll be a bunch of name value pairs. So in this case, metadata is an object of portal type. Oh, it's, it's a, I'm sorry. Metadata is an object, a property of this object, which is unnamed, which itself contains a bunch of name value pairs. So the nesting is similar to XML, and it's the same sort of architecture a bunch of repeated objects of the same type with different values associated with them. We sent up the response, and unless I am very much mistaken, it's not showing it to me here, and it may be the case that I don't do it here. But what we started doing with the video tools application is in some cases, and maybe I'll be able to come up with one where I can demonstrate it, Instead of just sending back the data, as it appears I'm doing here, and then using the DOM to represent it, I have on the server side a velocity template. How many people are familiar with velocity? Free marker? It's a, sent, uh, it's a text substitution API for Java. It's a lot like writing a JSP page. You have some markup. You set some variables. You throw some objects at it. The objects will be substituted in for the variables. So what we're doing in some of the video tools um, AJAX process is instead of just sending back the data, we send back the data plus a chunk of formatted HTML with the value set, and we just plop them right into place. And I think if I show you the library environment, we'll be able to see a little bit more of this. So this tree is JavaScript driven. There's no AJAX involved here because the 
Say it again. Well, initially there was. There's no AJAX involved in this particular process that I just showed you yet because it's loaded up front. The JavaScript is all sent down in one great big chunk. So now it's just JavaScript processing on the client. I can open and close and go through the, the folders at ease, at will, and I haven't done any, made any communication with the server. It's all client-side driven. There are a couple of pieces here, however, that do allow me to play a little bit with some of the really interesting properties of AJAX. This is a frames environment, a bunch of different documents. They're only related by the fact that the top-level document knows about them, knows about their children, knows about their, their JavaScript um, properties. I have the ability as an end user to go ahead and monkey with my folder environment. So I need another folder in here. There you go. I create a new folder. The tree catches it. That was an AJAX hit. So this page refreshed when some information changed in this environment. I think that's pretty cool. And I believe if I show you that transaction, we can see that in addition to the data, I also sent down a great big chunk of formatted, populated HTML, plunked it right into place. I think that's really cool. Questions? Okay, what's coming next? Ajax push. Anybody want to take a guess at what that means? All of the traffic that we've seen just now has all been client activity driven. Somebody pushes a button, mouses over a piece of information on the page, some trigger is sent up to the server, the server responds appropriately. Ajax, yep. Yeah. Something like that. The, pr the premise behind Ajax push is that you would load up the page and the browser would be instructed to go up and send a request up to the, up to the server and the server will just hold on to it indefinitely until it's got some information to send down. The information comes back down to the client, the client renders it and bang, sends that request back right back up to the server. Anybody imagine what the challenges associated with something like that would be? Well, on the browser side, browsers are, are um, by default built so that you can only have two simultaneous live connections to a given server, a given um, uh, IP at, at any given time. Dirty little secret, Firefox has the uh, configuration where you can override that. And I would show you where it is, but it always takes me about 20 minutes to find it. So I've got mine set up to allow me to make eight, eight simultaneous connections to any given URL. Um, what about on the, on the server side? If I do that, <laughs> I've made myself a threat to any given server I come across, right? Because I've generated a whole bunch of traffic. And that thread that's sitting up there, or that connection that's sitting up there, is eating up a server thread. So if you build an application that has thousands of people who want push technology running to your environment, Nobody has solved that yet, although there are folks working on it. So on the, in the Java side, and I honestly don't know how this works in any other server technologies, but in Java, every request up to the server constitutes a thread. So what if you could pile those on? There's no reason why you couldn't have a thread that contained multiple requests in it, but you would have to re-architect your application container. And I believe that at this moment, all of the major providers are working on miles to, to work around that, but I don't think anybody has come up with a standard solution. Ajax push, also known as reverse Ajax, also known inevitably as Comet. By the way, let me go back to that question about Ajax versus Ajax. Why? 
Why are we no longer saying that AJAX actually stands for something? You saw some demonstrations of it in, in some of the stuff that I built. Not You're not using XML. We found that in some cases it just makes a heck of a lot more sense to go with JSON. So some of the standard libraries that are, that are evolving to help you work with AJAX, and pro I promise you, if you do any work with AJAX at all, you're going to want to use one of these normalization libraries for some of the reasons that I brought up, right? They will take a lot of the pain of figuring out whether this is Explorer versus Safari versus Firefox away from you, go through their environments, and they do the normalization for you. And the one that I've relied on most heavily is the Yahoo UI library. Going back now a year, 18 months ago, when we first got started doing this, it was by far the most well-documented of the libraries that was available. It was the one that was closest to a developer's API as opposed to a whole bunch of really cool widgets that I could plug into my page. That playing field has leveled out a bit. These folks, Dojo, they're building a huge, huge implementation. All these people are getting, well, I should say all these people, but Dojo, certainly DWR, and I think Yahoo, we're all trying to figure out how to make um, the Ajax push technology work. Um, frankly, the one that really excites me, though, is these guys, DW, DWR, and let me see if I can do this without coming off like Daffy Duck, direct web remoting. All right. It's essentially JavaScript RPC. It's really very cool. What they've come up with is a way that you can, through a bunch of config files, specify Java objects in your, in your environment that you're going to expose to the end user as JavaScript objects. And it generates JavaScript on the fly when it renders your application, and all of the public, all the public methods are exposed in the JavaScript. I had intended to actually build a little demo of this to, to uh, show to you today, and I just ran out of time. But this is definitely the coming thing, and this is uh, certainly the next time I have to go and s go sit down to build a really complex AJAX application, I'm going to look at that first as the next thing I want to try. One of my colleagues at HBS has built a game around that, and it really went very, very well. Um, they're a British outfit. It used to be getahead.something.uk. That's the URL for them I just got today, so they've apparently decided to internationalize. Yeah, you know, the Google Web Toolkit. I downloaded that to play with close to a year ago, and I found it impenetrable. I couldn't figure out what it is that they wanted me to do with it. Now, I haven't gone back and tried again since then. Um, it's still getting a lot of buzz, so it's certainly not something you can dismiss. I probably ought to have put that up there as well. Okay, these guys, Jason.org. As I say, that's just a technology you're going to want to become familiar with. I didn't talk too much about JDOM and JXPath today. Does anybody work with JDOM? Okay, one person. I think that JDOM is by far the best XML parsing library for Java that exists. It's written so intuitively for any Java developer that it's a no-brainer to work with. JXPath, anybody want to take a guess? Has anybody worked with that? A Java, a Java API for building XPath queries, and JDOM and JXPath play very nicely together. So I could take an, ob an object, a do an XML document, render it as a JDOM document, throw a JXPath query at it, any particular piece of information, however complex, it will do all of the seeking into the, um, into the document for me, return me a JDOM object, usually of type element, maybe of type attribute, that specifically corresponds to whatever the XPath query was that I threw at it at JXPath. The two of them work very nicely together. If you're going to be doing any amount of work with parsing XML and JDA, uh, in Java, know those libraries. Any other questions? So with the great text editor that you had in the editable text field, was that among the libraries on the previous slide? It was not. And frankly, a colleague of mine put that in there, and I don't remember. I want to say tiny MCE, or am I making a fool of myself? I think that was the WYSIWYG editor he used. And it, the one he used, I know, is used a lot. People are familiar with the Confluence Wiki, which is a Java-driven wiki server. They use it for all of their text editing as well. It's, it's pretty widely used. Um, remind me, and I will include it in the slides so it can be distributed to the class. 
it's a great tool, and it's actually customizable. So we had to take some pieces out and put some information in, and it was relatively easy to do. Yeah. A tutorial for writing AJAX environments or AJAX applications. I probably learned as much from the, using the YUI libraries, the Yahoo libraries, and just going through the documentation. Uh, it was one of the ones back here. Does anybody know how to go back in a presentation? You can tell I don't do this very often. So it's developer.yahoo.com slash YUI. Just using the API and going through the API documentation was pretty much how I picked up most of what I know about writing AJAX. And then there was a lot of just hit and miss experience. So migrating from XML to JSON, the impetus for that was the XML was really painful to parse on the client side, painful to construct on the client side as well. Um, beginning to use the inner HTML property of HTML objects, which, by the way, many people will tell you is a great big no-no. It's not actually part of the um, JavaScript specification, inner HTML, the premise being that you could plug badly formed HTML into any node in the page. Any node in the page could have been badly formed to begin with. I'm not entirely impressed by that. All of the major browsers support it. It works beautifully. I recommend it. Um, but all of that was through the pain and suffering of trying these things out and getting them wrong or getting them right but not quite right enough. I've been writing AJAX-driven applications now for, oh, two years. Sounds about right. And I'm still changing it as I go. You know, the, co the most complex thing is it, it's going to be driven by how good your JavaScript chops are. That's actually the, the biggest stumbling block. When I started in my job at HBS, I had come from a position at Brandeis where the only programming I had ever done was in JavaScript. Um, if you read the bio that David passed around um, earlier this week or late last week, it was a really forgiving job market when I got hired at HBS. They couldn't hold on to engineers for love of money. Everybody was going off to the dot coms. And as underqualified as I was for the job, I got it because there was nobody left. And so I learned most of my Java stuff on the job at HBS. Um, and quite honestly, for, for the first four or five years I was on the job at HBS, I did very little JavaScript because it didn't really present itself as usefully as it does now that Ajax is, is out there and is getting such, such attention. Um, so I would say if you really want to get into this, start brushing up on those JavaScript chops. I mean, David's right. It's not an entirely intuitive programming language, but it's a lot more powerful than people give it credit for. Other questions? Okay, well, thanks. I will hang around, and I appreciate your time.